What is good? We are back and it is rookie mock season. And not only are we back, all three of us are back. Tripod. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Last time I tried to make a tripod and y'all were like, it wasn't a good tripod. So I brought my own tripod. So we got, we got everybody here tonight. Last one we did uh, pre-draft was just me and Jay Wayne. So this is our first post-draft rookie mock. And we were going to welcome in Big Co on this one. Big Co, how you doing? Good. Recovery's going solid. You guys asked me how I was doing tonight. And I was like, once I can get get past my coughs, once I can cough and it's not the end of the world, we have recovered. We told everyone you had appendicitis. Sorry. PII. I mean, I'm not keeping any secrets. <laughs> I didn't Certainly think not. Was care. If you were trying to, it wasn't going to work either. <laughs> J Mike hit me up. He was like, "You got that? You doing a startup right now because you're uh, sitting on the couch?" And I was like, "Absolutely, absolutely, of course." What else my, are you gonna do? It's my appendicitis team. I would say daytime TV sucks, but I mean nowadays it doesn't even matter. So doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. You can watch hours and hours of WWE archives. <laughs> That's a rabbit hole that I try not to get down, especially if I got a team on the clock. What? I get a hell yeah. What? <laughs> I watched right. the uh, Go ahead, biography man. for uh, Roddy Piper the other night. It was an sure. hour and a half. First day on uh first day after I got my appendix out, so I tore up all painkillers and watched this <laughs> diag- my biography. And it was cool as hell, and I ordered a hot rod shirt. <laughs> got to and I had to. I was like, oh man, this thing got me all jacked up. Ordered me a Roddy Piper shirt. It says hot rod on the front. So all awesome. zest. Didn't know what size I was going to need, so I ordered two just in case. Send one back. Gotta win. I don't want to wait to wear that thing. I'll send the other one back. Mm-hmm. Had to. <laughs> Jay Wayne, how's it going? How do you have all your organs? I I lost my appendix a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> you did. I didn't know. I'm this. the only member with an appendix. All right. Yeah, you don't need it. You don't need it. Yeah, I I had it taken out in the ninth grade. It was a bummer because I missed a couple mm. missed a couple uh, baseball games because of it. This pick he's just a shoddy appendix over there <laughs> because at least lasted like high school. A strong 30 plus years. All right. Nobody cares. What are we doing? Yeah. Here tonight? <laughs> we are doing our first of many post rookie mocks. And this is a standard non super flex mock full point PPR and tight end premium. So which means tight end in this case is getting 1.5 per reception. Um, kind of makes the best ones better. Um, so, you know, a little more room for Kyle Pitts to flourish in this one. <laughs> no spoilers, but uh yeah, you guys ready to kick this thing off? Let's do it. All right, so we're underway here. We're rolling. We're obviously going to get outrun by the clock here because we're more long-winded than we'd like to be. But here we go. First pick off the board is Kyle Pitts. Now, we did say it was tight end premium, uh, so a little more value there. But, you know, probably can't be doing that. Mm -mm. Um, And I would say, you know, Go ahead and trade back to the one, two or one, three. But like recently, I you know, or four, but recently, as I've been seeing them, FFPC drafts, regular drafts like Kyle Pitts is going one, 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 two, one, three. So it's you're really risking the biscuit to trade backwards to not end up with your guy, Kyle Pitts. If you if that's your guy and that's who you want, you got to take him. He uh, he went one, two um, in every single he went one, one and one of them and one, two in like five of five out of six of my rookie drafts in FFPC. So if you want them, you got to be in the top two. That's yeah. just too much. I mean, I'm all for taking pits wherever you want to take him, except like one, one, or one, two, really. I like oh, one, three. I got a I got one, four. That's as high as I can go, and I feel like that's really high, tight end premium or not, to take a tight end. No, see, that's the thing. If you if you're playing, if you're, you if you're if you hear when you see those people on Twitter or wherever, and you and they say tight end premium doesn't matter and doesn't change anything, and if you're you're overcorrecting, they don't know what they're talking about. Like Casey just said, it makes the best ones better. It doesn't yeah. really change anything for the back for the top five down, but those top two or three, it makes them so much better. It gives them 50% more on every catch. And you've got a 90 catch right in like Darren Waller, then that's another 45 points that they're going to get. 
And yeah. that's, that's huge. And, and first of all, and they're going to be beating you up in regular PPR anyway. So if, and I was taking, I'm taking Darren Waller before any of these rookies in a startup in, in FFPC because of what it matters, what it, what does, what happens when you have an advantage at tight end. So if, if Kyle Pitts turns into Kyle Pitts, right. what we've all made Kyle Pitts out to be, I got no problem. Would you take him one, one in tight end premium? Yeah. So that's what kind of what I was going to say is like, it's probably a little bit of a reach. I would say to trade, but you're not going to get him if you trade most likely. Not going to get him. Um, and look, I mean, I get it. It's a tight end. They don't work out. It takes a long time to develop. They aren't worth it. Tight end premium. You're overcorrecting all those silly things. But look, he is pretty special. This guy doesn't really play tight end per se. He's not really a wide receiver. He's a unicorn. And when there's unicorns in the draft, you just draft the unicorn. That's like what you it. do. We'll keep um, moving. We'll talk more about that later. Well, hang on. The, the, I want to I want to hammer home this a little bit more like the tight end is the mismatch and it's the advantage. It's becoming one of the biggest advantages of the NFL and everybody wants it. Uh, the position's changing. Um, and I think the way we're viewing it is is starting to change it. Well, I should say you guys are viewing it, not you guys, but everybody else. We've already been kind of all in. We're moving, trying to get to a positionless football thing. And these hybrid type players that are playing tight end, the guys who are at the top of this totem pole are absolute game changers and everybody wants them. And if they get into the right system and they're, and they're starting to become more and more normal and people are chasing them more and more. And if they get in the right system with the right staff and put them in position to crush, then this isn't a reach at all. Like, like you said, Travis Kelsey and tight end premium scored 367 points. That's good for tight end one. That's better than Devonte Adams. Devontae wide Adams receiver scored, one. Uh, yeah, right. Better but for wide receiver one. Sorry. That's better than Devonte Adams. Devonte Adams scored 366 points. Now it's only one point better. And but he still, did miss games. Devonte right. got hurt, but sure. Still. But I'm just, but he, Devonte was still the number one receiver. Like exactly. he was absolutely crushing. Darren Waller scored 336. That was good for wide receiver three. I mean, mm -hmm. Everyone hate oh, TJ Hawkinson didn't work out. TJ Hawkinson was wide receiver 29 last year in tight end premium. He had one less point than DJ Moore. Logan Thomas wide receiver 26 with 212 points in, in tight end premium. Bobby Tanyan wide receiver 32. So don't tell me that it, it, it absolutely changes the guys who get high volume. Um, and what, if Pitts is going to be one of those, I know exactly. I just wanted to hammer that home. You said, move on. I was like, no, I want to, I want to hammer this home a little bit more because when we talked about Pitts, this is kind of the same thing that I was talking about in the draft video. And this is, this is why, you know, Hey, if you want to take him up there, I'm not even going to be that mad at you. I would say it's probably a little bit of a reach. You should trade back. It is a tight end, but this guy's special. And Atlanta is a, is a good, he could get off to a fast start, man. Like it's, it's a decent spot for him to land in. No, I like, I'm, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you went in because like you said, I mean, we've been, we've been on this for a while. We've been pushing the Kelsey up there at the top of the board. We've been telling, we've been all over Waller, really all over Waller because of you and hard knocks and, um, and our, and the people that listen to us need to know these things. Oh, we were on Waller before hard knocks. That just confirmed it. Uh, <laughs> one last right. thing. One, 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 you, you named all those guys that were, you know, they beat out in terms of scoring. That was for the wide receivers, man. Let me get these two running backs. For sure. That's a good segue there. Good yeah. segue. segue. Uh, so uh, pick two here is Najee Harris, obviously the typical one, one for the most part. Um, and then Jay Wayne, you were up with pick one, three. A any problem with taking Najee Harris one, one or, or here is the one, two. Anybody, anybody object? We're good. No, nah, I mean, if I'm on the clock, I'm probably going to have to take Travis Etienne, but that's because I went to Clemson. Uh, but but to get gifted Harris at, at one, two is a gift. And and that's uh, who I think you probably should take at one, one. All right. So who do you take at one, three? So I, I went Etienne, of course. And that's uh, that, that, that's not just bias. OK, I, th I do think that you should take ETN in one, two, basically in a, in a rookie draft. That's where I would have him. I can't, I can't let my Homer Homer dumb put me over Harris in terms of telling the listeners what they should do. But I mean, ETN is just a freak. And now they got him working out in the wide receiver room. He's got the wide, he's got the running back thing down. So let's, he's going to be what they wanted Tony to be. Plus he can crush it running back. Like I'm so excited for Travis ETN and anybody talking trash or trying to negate what he's done or something. It's just outrageous. And don't get caught up in that hate because it's stupid. And if you, if, if ETN starts to fall in your draft, you should absolutely pounce. Now, if you want to take Jamar Chase, I can't really argue too much with you on that. If you want to take Chase 1-1, one, one, 
go for it. I'm not going to do it. I got to take these two running backs. Uh, I do think Chase is a special player, but I, I think the running backs are special players too, and they can score more points. So that's that's what we're doing here. That's what we're talking about. We've always been about that, but I'm curious to see how you guys feel, if that's what, the way you feel. Yeah, well, we'll, well, I think we're jumping a little more tr- Chase ETN here in a second once we get to Big Coast pick. Um, but the, I just wanted to point out quickly, like everybody that's really just going, I know it's the off season and all the stupid storylines with everybody who's really upset about urban Meyer using ETN as a receiver and rookie. What are we, we're talking about two or three days here with a guy who there's nobody's in pads. Nobody's doing anything. Like he's a hard worker. He's going to figure out where to be and what to do and who to fucking block. Like he's, they're just using him as a receiver. Why not? I took Why that not? as a positive, not like, a negative. Yeah. This is so stupid anyway. Yeah. All right. So pick one. Four is Jamar Chase, uh, and then pick one five. Big Co was on the clock. What was going on? And then we'll rewind for a second uh, to talk a little bit more. Chase ETN. Well, uh, if you have a choice, and you're, I mean, this was a mock, and I jumped in at one five because it was uh, I, the one five is a is a wild wild west of the rookie draft this year. Um, you just don't know what kind of risk gift. You just don't know what you could get gifted there. The three of us, we had a league. We just got Jamar Chase at the one five. We took Najee Harris. With, we had the one one. We watched some craziness go down. Um, and then we got Jamar Chase at the one five because some people take Javante Williams earlier. Um, I've seen Jalen Waddle jump in the top four and push ETN to one five. It's a fun place. It's a crazy place to be. And it's, if you're a Javante Williams guy, you can't go really wrong because you got Javante Williams. Williams are better. Um, if you're an ETN guy and you're at one five and Javante Williams goes in, fr- in front of you, then you're just, you got gifted ETN. Um, and the, a lot of things can go, you know, a lot of things hinge on one five in the draft. And, if, you know, if it, we'll talk more about this on Patreon with, a, with more rookie draft trade talk. But um, if you're outside of the one five, it can be very, very expensive to get to one four. I feel like one five and one six are more attainable and the one six is obviously way more attainable. And if it goes to the top five like this, then one six, you can feel a little bit let down, but if something happens, somebody might take that Jalen Waddle up there in the top and the one six, all of a sudden becomes just like the one five. I wanted to rewind then real quick and put you back on, on the spot here. You have us as a whole and you have always been, you know, the, the elite running backs early if this was last year and we were drafting, we all and you big co would have been putting Travis Etienne up in that conversation with the Clyde Edwards and the, and the Jonathan Jonathan. Taylors. And this year you've had a little bit of change of heart. And only reason I really want to stop and talk about it for a second was it just seems like a big philosophy shift. So I wanted to see if you had, Anything to talk, any comments or what you were thinking there on on that you like you would take Chase over ETN at this point? Well, like we 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 had the one five and there was a lot of stuff going on. We tried to trade up to get to one three um, to make sure to try to get ETN and take the uh, chance of uh, anything crazy happening um, away from us. And um, mm-hmm. and you and I were discussing stuff and I said I had no problem taking Chase over ETN. And in this, in our draft, in that league, we needed a wide receiver badly. And we had, we were studded out at, at running back. And um, I just said, you know, I have no problem with us taking Chase over ETN in, in that league for that team. Um, you know, of course, I'm not like uh, some LSU insider, but a lot of people have, you know, say Jamar Chase pushed Justin Jefferson to the slot. Now, big ups to Justin Jefferson to from move to move from the outside and go to the slot and catch 90 something balls that year, Joe Burrow's year, uh, you know, the Heisman, the championship year. And they're just talking about how, you know, in that for Joe Brady at LSU, the coaching staff as good as Justin Jefferson is and as great as Justin Jefferson was, had one of the best, if not the best rookie wide receiver campaigns in the history of the NFL. He got pushed to the slot because the, his own coaching staff said, you know, this guy Chase is is he's a beast. He's he's our alpha, and um, that you know, you you don't want to be sleeping on somebody like that. Nobody's saying you're sleeping on Chase if you take ETN over him. It's just that I think that you could go. You can't go wrong. Um, 
I don't think you can go wrong at all with taking Chase. And we talked about it pre-draft about what would happen if the if the Bengals actually took him and they ended up taking him. And you got uh, the you know the first receiver off the board, amazing draft capital, and you got your college sweetheart quarterback throwing you the ball. So it's it's just match made and hit. They're, you're gonna get forced the ball if you're the first wide receiver off the board. And if you back with your college quarterback, then he's gonna throw you the ball anyway because y'all y'all are boys. Y'all got rings together in college. So I mean, I just think that the definitely take nothing away from T Higgins and Tyler Boyd. I just think the connection from day one is already there with him and Burrow. And the only thing missing is our confidence in Burrow's knee that went crooked. If, yeah. Bur- you know, if Burrow's knee wasn't crooked and he would have finished the season and he would have been looking, you know, still on the same path with um, Herbert, then it would be even more wheels up. You know, we just don't yeah. know if that, with that knee solid. So that's yeah. just what I was thinking. I mean, Chase is just such a stud. Yeah. Uh, same could be said for ET going with his college quarterback. Uh, oh, oh yeah. Completely super comfortable with him checking down. I'm pretty much going to side on the, of always ET in front of chase. But again, I can't be mad at you. I can't argue with you. If you wanted to take chase one, one, I couldn't really make a terrible case to be like, you're an idiot. Uh, there's some difference in philosophy of running back over receiver. I like to use, we like to use the rookie draft as one of the only ways to replenish that stock of running backs this year. It's kind of weak after the top two, like it, it kind of breaks down into tiers of, of these guys elite. Then I'm going to take these guys over the elite receivers just because they're so hard to come by. Um, Agreed. And just like, uh, not, not the slowest no, guy anymore, but what Jay said, I mean, I completely agree. I think it's hogwash. If you think that this is a problem for the, the coach, the head coach, the new head coach, the guy who's completely in charge of this team wants to get this running back passes and and and, and targets. I think that if you don't know and understand how PPR works, you know, and how the, the, the fantasy football that we play and how that works and how that's really good for ET, and I don't, I don't understand why you don't understand that. Um, but that's what <laughs> well, we're here. That's what we're here for. But like you said, and he's going back with Trevor. Trevor threw him a lot of passes, right? Right. So like from day one, they're starting quarter, but Trevor's not going to, if Trevor's healthy, he's starting and he's going to be a starter for that team for the next 10 years and ETN's not going to be on the team for 10 years but he's got for the, at least for the next four because he's got that first round draft capital with the team option for the fifth Trevor Lawrence is is not only check downs but like and screens and trawling up plays yeah and, um that, yeah. that's that's he what he's he been get doing 80 yard touchdown by dumping it down to ETN like he's ETN's not his, boy. ETN's yeah. his boy ETN's his boy I'm nervous and nine's on the field that's where I'm going Exactly. I know that's my safety valve. All right. So next pick off the board uh, is one six. That's Trevor Lawrence. Uh, any big problems with that? I think we would all uh, maybe slide him down just a couple of picks, but I can't, again, can't be super upset about that. I like Trevor Lawrence. And I think, you know, we get caught up with all the running of all these other quarterbacks and elevating field and Lance because they can run. And I think it's always been, and always will be a very underrated part of Trevor Lawrence's game. And I think there's going to be even as great as he is as a quarterback, there's going to be even more hidden points with the rushing ability of Trevor Lawrence. Now, obviously he's a franchise guy, so they're going to try to, but at the end of the day, they're trying to win games as well. Uh, And he's probably, he's a more athletic Andrew Luck. And we know how, you know, everybody eventually caught on to, Hey, this guy can't, you know, we don't want him to take shots like that. Maybe you learn from, don't take those shots, get out of bounds. There's no reason to do this or that, but I think there's, you know, a little bit even more of value on Trevor Lawrence. So I can't be too upset about it. Any huge objections there. It should be really easily drawn about in your mind to see Trevor Lawrence running it in on the goal line for Clemson over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's what I, that's what I remember. Obviously, that, the the pass seventy five like, yard touchdown run against Ohio State too. That one sticks out in your mind. Was it was like, it oh, seventy? Shit. Was it seventy five yards? It was a long. I knew it was long. It was a long, long one. There was so many of those. You know, not only just like. Um, the fakes where they draw the D in down and he runs out, but like j- just straight up options. And then Trevor would keep it. And he, Trevor's a big boy. Yeah. I think like hidden points is a good, good term for what he's going to give you fantasy wise with his legs. Yeah. All right. So the next little, two picks, little too go, ahead, high. go ahead. Get, take those two high. wide receivers, maybe. Okay. Well, yeah, little we'll get there. High. So the next two picks are the two Alabama receivers, uh, Devonta Smith and Jalen Waddle in that order. Uh, Devontae Smith, 1-7. Jalen Waddle, 1-8. Um, I could go in any order there. I'm, I'm fine with the order that they went in. I would probably slide Lawrence in behind those guys. I, I don't know how you guys feel about that. But I, I'm not upset I would do about that. I would do any, that, and I would probably take Waddle over Devontae Smith, but maybe that's a mistake. And any three of those guys, I'm fine, kind of fine with jumbling them up and taking them where you want them, but for the most part, I'm going to slide the two receivers in first. Big Well, I mean, I'm... St- 
in a one quarterback league, I'm still pushing Trevor Lawrence down the, down the board a little bit. Just looking Fair for enough. some players. I mean, yeah. uh, me you too, but be, I, I didn't want to be, I'm not upset about it. Like, I got one, one of our home leagues. I, the, I think my only good quarterback is Tom Brady. And of course, Tom Brady's never going to retire, but I got no problem taking <laughs> Trevor Lawrence, but also with Trey Lance, if, if this was any other year, like, Trey, I feel like Trevor Lawrence would be kind of not that he's not by himself, but he would be by himself. But you give the Trey Lance phenom prospect that he is, he's not. When I say phenom, I don't want to take anything away from Trey from Trevor Lawrence, but uh, physically, what you know, he rushed for a thousand yards in college. He's a big bad man, and now you give Kyle Shanahan Trey Lance. Uh, fantasy points wise, he could be right there with him. And then mm-hmm. my boy Justin Fields is six. Three two thirty and runs a four three runs a four four and he torched Clemson in the playoffs and so I mean last year uh, I saw <laughs> Jay, Jay Wayne did not like that Jay Wayne no, it's did fine. not he did like that. he did he looked like the better quarterback that night for sure torched him and and you know and it just he's he and played an banged up against Alabama and kept them in the game for for most of it so I just uh, me and Casey had a lot of talks and. FFPC rookie draft weekend about quarterbacks and fantasy points and rushing. And I just feel like Trey and um, Justin Fields is coming into the NFL as a much better passer than you would. And t- like his, he's so dangerous. He's not anywhere close to Lamar Jackson with his legs, but he's just so much, he's so dangerous with his legs, but he's, I feel like he's so much more dangerous with his arm than, than Lamar Jackson. And I just feel like he could be, he could give you fantasy points in bunches as well. So that would make me want to continue to take stabs at actual position players before I would want to take Trevor Lawrence, just because there's other, I would, as a quarterback, as a dr- drop back and get the ball out and then being an NFL quarterback and somebody where your floor is so safe because you're going to be, I heard that Trevor Lawrence is a, a scout said Trevor Lawrence is the only true freshman college quarterback that he's ever seen that was ready to start an NFL game. Like when he was 17 years old, he was ready to start an NFL game because he was a man when he was a kid. Like that was, you know, and the skills were there too. So like the floor on Trevor Lawrence is the fact that he's pretty much not going to fail. Right. Yeah. And so these other two court Trey Lance could fail. Justin Fields could fail for sure. But their legs, we've seen it with Jalen Hurts, their legs will keep them. They, they will play some football. They will be able to score you fantasy points. Now they might, you know, bounce out of the NFL in two exactly, years. Yeah. The, the legs Trevor, will keep you scoring fantasy points, but they might not keep you necessarily a starter for super long. Exactly. Exactly. And that's a gamble you have to take. Yeah. But I would have, you know, in a one quarterback league, I would have to continue looking for players that can help my team unless uh, you'd have to be in rough shape to be like, all right, give me, give me Trevor Lawrence at six, one, yeah. six, you know, and statistically, if you look at it between those three guys, Lance fields and Lawrence, like one of them's going to bust, you know, just using statistics, you know, statistically so. two out of three should bust. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's well, Zach one and a half Mac of Jones in there too. Exactly. So. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's keep it moving. Um, we got the next two picks or two more running backs off the board. Those guys are starting to get pushed up because there isn't a whole lot of running backs and people are thirsty for the running backs. It's Um, dry. It's a darp out there. It's it's (laughs) darp. It is darp. Um, No wet ass running backs. No, that's just dry. Um, So Trey Sermon goes off the board here at two nine. Michael Carter goes off at two ten. To me, I I think this is, you can't, I can't, I can't do this. I'm not doing it. Um, but what this is now doing for me is in this scenario, like if I'm sitting at two, three, uh, I'm immediately or, or further back. This now tells me, boom, I'm doing what I can to move up and trade in to get one of Rashad Bateman, Rondell Moore, Terrace Marshall, or Elijah, uh, Moore. Cause now you just, you just bumped all that value down. If Sermon and Carter are getting pushed up in there, even if there's a guy, one of those other guys goes in between them and then Carter or Sermon goes like, I'm moving up to try to get one of those remaining guys. And I'm okay with mortgaging some of the back half of this draft remaining to try to get up into that tier of guys. Cause I do think that's the break right there. And I think that's, I think it's setting up perfectly to do that now. Is it because I'm not anti sermon and I'm not anti Michael Carter. I just value those guys a little bit more. I value those receivers a little bit more than those two running backs, which is odd for me to even say out loud, but um, you know, it 
regardless, it's it's giving it's giving value whether I like those guys or not. There's nothing I could do about it if somebody else takes them. But I'm not necessarily itching to trade up to try to take those guys. But as soon as they go, now I'm trading up to try to get the value that's around there. And like you said, even maybe you like Trey Lance and Fields, and that adds two more guys that you like in there, and you're in the back of the third. So now you can trade up to the middle of the second or back of the second. Now you can trade up to the middle part of the second and still get one of those range of guys. So I think that's a big strategy for me right now as we've gone through a couple of rookie drafts and I've been seeing in mocks this is kind of how it's playing out um what are your thoughts on that I mean I think 2526 is normally traditionally a really um and when I say traditionally I mean I've you know through 10 rookie drafts or so that I've seen the board on I feel like 25 or 26 is um a good spot to find like at worst all right you see you know a Justin Fields fail or uh at one, you know, two five. I saw Terrence Marshall make it to two five one time. You know, um, like you said, I, I completely agree. If you, um, if you're like, oh, there's, you just, you don't know which one's going to make it all the way to the back. So yeah, if you can get up to two three or you know two two or something like that, then you'd have you'd be sitting there with your choice of two or three guys that you like or who. If you have one player you're targeting specifically, but if you're playing that bracket coverage that we that we try to find each and every year, you get up. You know, if you. It is kind of comes down to trade partner as well. But if you can get into two two and you get on the clock at two two and there's three guys you like, maybe you can trade back to two 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 three or two four and recoup some of what you paid to get yeah. there and still be happy with who you got. Right. And really, if 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 all those receivers go in front of all those guys and it's Mike, you know, if Bateman, Rondell Moore, Elijah Moore, and Terrace Marshall all go, well then hell, I'm even trying to trade up to get Sermon and and. Uh, the other running back, um, Michael Carter at that point. Right. So like, I feel like you're in a, you know, that's the, those are the spots that I'm trying to move up in. But especially when I see those two guys go, those two running backs go off the board, my, my radar goes off and I start trying to move up um, again. It's not that I dislike sermon, just a lot of injury history there. They're running the, the Niners. I'm a Niners guy. The Niners haven't committed to a singular running back in so long. Um, that they'd have to prove it to me first before I can really say that I feel great about picking the Niners running back in the first round. I'll just take Elijah Mitchell in the third. Um, right. There's going to be know. weeks when you feel like, in, like you nailed it taking Trey Sermon. And then there's going to probably be weeks where you're like, ah, wish I had somebody else. And I'm with you. I, th I think that's spot on. You know, these two guys push these wide receivers, these two running backs, because everyone's so thirsty. Like you said, it pushes – this this draft down a little bit, and I think it's a mistake to to. It, it, I got to at least get Terrace Marshall and Rondell Moore, and I'm not. I still, I think I'm leaning Rondell over the over Terrace, but those two guys are the ones I want out of this group. Now, if you need a quarterback, I understand, and we're also counting on those guys going in this range and being able to get you know factoring that in. But man, Terrace and Rondale is, is where I'm in this, this one nine to two, five range. If I can get one of those guys anywhere in there, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, in my opinion, anyway. Well, and I, like I said, I do like Sermon. I like the game. I was loving it when I can get him in the middle of the second round. And now, if he falls down to the to the two three two four area, I'm excited about getting him. But I'm going to take those other receivers beforehand. And Michael Carter, like I love the situation that he's going into. I like what Joe Douglas is doing, building from the trenches. They're they're making an offensive line. Zach Wilson, you know, I'm I'm not in love with him, but they're at least surrounding him with talent, giving him a chance with an offensive line. And now you have a Shanahan disciple going in there with his first season. So it may be slow first season play callers. It's going to be really tough for, for LaFleur to really go out there and flourish because it's his first season ever doing it. Um, but I like anybody who's into the taking Trey Sermon for the reason that you're taking Trey Sermon because the Niners run game is well, LaFleur is coming from that that whole deal. Uh, so I do love the Michael Carter pick for them. I liked going after Michael Carter. I just didn't think he would ever be up in the first round there. Uh, or at least that, you know, I say that high. I mean, really like 112 was, you know, the earliest I was thinking that he would go. But any other closing thoughts on that? Everybody's good. All right. <laughs> So the next pick at 111 is Rashad Bateman. Not really too upset about that. I think like Jay Wayne said, I think I got to take Rondell and Terrace over him. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't need whatever. to let him slide any more than that. And, and maybe um, I don't, I could take Elijah, I guess. I don't know, but I can't let Bateman slide too much more than that. Yeah. I'm short term crush that Bateman ended up with the Ravens. Yeah. Well, we so got a lot. Short we talked about it. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit on the re reaction show. Like, elite, the, I guess the only other thing is that he's that that 
Lamar's never been surrounded with this much talent, so maybe it really works out. Uh, we'll see. Oh, you All mean right. you mean Willie Sneed and a couple of rookies? Ain't, you know, <laughs> it worked they, out. they didn't set him up for passing success. Bring yeah. Willie Sneed was his number one for two years. Come on, man. Hey, yeah. hey Mark Andrews still caught like 26 touchdowns in one year, so <laughs> somebody's getting some of it. All right. Well, I was up at 112. I took Rondell Moore. I struggled with this one. I used pretty much the whole clock. I flip flop daily on whether it's Rondell or Terrace Marshall. I don't think you can go wrong. I love both of those guys. One day I'm like, I love Terrace. I love that he's with Joe Brady. I know it's not going to last that long because Brady's going to move on. And then I'm like, well, I love Rondell Moore. Kyler we're running around. You know, it's really just Nuke and an old ass AJ Green. Obviously, I've really been a fan of Christian Kirk, but that Quentin hadn't quite ran out or worked out. And Rondell can do so much for that team. Right. In the short, the inherent short spreadness. And the intermediate stuff is is the inherent huge. spreadness in that attack just fits so well with what Rondell Moore does. Awesome. And Rondell Moore works good off script with the quarterback. So, I mean, and, and he squats 600 pounds. Uh, so. As a true freshman, he's probably up to like 1,200 by now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So second round here, we got Trey Lance and Justin Fields kicking that off. Um, I'm probably going to take Terrace Marshall and Elijah uh, Moore over those two quarterbacks. I'm going to probably let those two guys move down. But uh, what are your guys' thoughts there? Big Co, I'm going to go to you first because you've been – feel like you've been you've made this decision been upset about this decision i know it's kind of team build uh specific but go ahead yeah i mean it, lots of hot hit crazy action ffpc rookie weekend and we got we had so many teams we had a lot of two one and um got some of my teams got one of my teams mixed up and was pushing for the quarterback and it was the wrong team we really needed a receiver should have taken terrace marshall took trey lance um I'm big on actually the the, the difference making ability that Trey Lance and, and Justin Fields can have as a quarterback, even in the one quarterback league. Like I was saying before, the the guys, this, what the the fantasy points they can make with their legs can be difference makers, and it's still, I mean, it's hard to not take make sure that Terrace Marshall or Rondell Moore is off the board. At, if you're a completely loaded team and you need a quarterback, I wouldn't pass on one of these guys because you you don't want to be I mean, not that Mac Domes or Zach Wilson can't put up fantasy points, but they got to be really, really good, really, really fast to be difference makers. Right. And the quarterbacks with the with the legs don't have to be really, really good, really, really fast to still be every week difference makers. And but to the Terrence Marshalls and the, and I can I know Elijah Moore. I don't know as much about him. I don't feel as strongly as about him as I do uh, or more in T Marshall. Um, but I know he's getting a, a ton of love, and and he may be. And, and uh, he may end up being the best of the bunch. Um, so I don't I don't hate you to to go ahead and get those guys out of the way before these quarterbacks are there. Uh, multiple times, Casey and I traded back um, just saying, hey, That's we got, you know, we got four or five guys here. We like take get a second round pick. Or, and, and, and some people get called up and say, hey, I couldn't get a deal done. It's like, well, how, did you go down in your asking price? Yeah. You know, you if you're really that OK with it, then a, you could you just take something. If you, if you re, if you really if you need to make the trade, go down to get a third round pick, and it doesn't feel great right now. But if you went from two 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 one to two four, and you had four guys that you like, you got a third round pick. There's some people that say I couldn't get a deal, deal done. Did, did you try hard enough? And you know if you're you don't try too hard and, and and fall back to two six and miss miss all four guys that you like. You know right, that's basically right. all I got to say about that. All right, well let's kind of move into that two five two six area. Big Co is on the clock at two five. Uh, I think this is, I think there's, we just kind of hit it a little bit, but I think there's a little bit of a break here of players and where we all kind of have values to, to some extent here. But I think you, I think you did a good job here and, and hit, hit, a, hit a good mark. So what were you thinking of the two five and who'd you take? Well, I took St. Brown and I, I feel good about that, but I, I mentioned something about two, five, two, six earlier. And that's because a lot of times you'll see uh, Kenny Gainwell jump up or Kadarius Tony jump up. And that way the, some of the guys that Jay Wayne said he wanted, or some of the guys that um, we've talked about that we wanted on here, um, or even a Friar Muth and maybe premium. Right. So those guys are, you know, they, they, they're given to you. So getting the same kind of spot here, so, but I took St. Brown and I feel good about it because of the, some of the stuff you were talking about, about St. Brown a while back. And, and you, you mentioned in about the, he's going to play with Jared golf and he's um, with the same guy who wanted to take Cooper cup. Can you explain all that to me again? Yeah. That was basically just like the reception perception kind of showing where 
uh, St. Brown did a lot of his damage and it wasn't all that different from where Cooper cup was doing his damage. And it's the same GM who drafted that's where, that's where uh, it was. Cooper cup and, you know, just, and they don't really have anybody along those lines, not that St. Brown can't hit some home runs. Um, but you know, that kind of gives them, you know, they have, you know, a, a Tyrell Williams and they have a Quentin Cephas who, you know, he's a little bit more of a possession kind of bully, Jeez. but I, and I really like him, um, you know, and they, but they don't have like a lot of guys like a St. Brown, which is what really has elevated him to, I think that uh tear break leader for me, at, uh, you know, maybe not quite leader. We'll talk about that for a second, but I think he's where he was behind a couple of guys there. I think the landing spot and, you know, just going and, and watching more and then seeing some of that kind of stuff has really turned me on to, to take being pretty cool with taking St. Brown after that group of guys here. Uh, there might be one other guy that I would probably take over him. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll keep it moving and we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that. So the next pick at two, six is Pat Fryermuth. Uh, not can't really be upset about this. This is tight end premium. Like we said, I would probably knock him back one more spot and I would elevate Kadarius Tony here, uh, which is the next pick at two seven. Um, and I could even be okay with taking Tony over St. Brown. Uh, in most cases I'm going to, uh, most cases I'm, I'm going to probably trade back because everybody hates Tony and I'll just, I just want to get all the Tony. I don't care. You could take your break, your breakout age and kick rocks with it. Cause I watched this guy play the NFL had, a great draft on him. This is similar to a Brandon Ayuk, like I talked about in my in in my breakdown of Kadarius Tony, where you know the whole NFL was screaming at you that this guy's good. The whole fantasy community didn't give a shit, and there's Kadarius Tony. Now, yeah, he goes to a situation where it's a little full, but I mean, I think this guy has it all. And there's a, multiple teams that were upset that they weren't they didn't get a chance at Kadarius Tony. Put uh, the guys can play. He's really fun to watch. Everybody could be mad about Gettleman and Kadarius Tony and breakout ages and yada, yada, yada. I'm going to take this guy because he can ball and I'm fine with it uh, and go kick rocks. Yeah, I got to agree with you. And I, and I could take I think I'm with you, man. We we, we took St. Brown over Tony in a draft recently. We, we we have a decent team and we needed a starter. Uh, but I, after we hit the draft button, I was like, dang it. I wish, well, hang on. The, the I preface wish to that Tony. is that we were going to get we were going to end up with Tony everywhere. And this is a free league. So it was basically like we kind of need a starter. St. Brown might be a little bit better to uh, right off the rip to help us out a little bit. And we're going to end up with so much Kadarius Tony. Though, let's not let's not put him. Let's not get him here. So we didn't just like, hey, let's just take St. Brown over. No, there was there was the precursors. Hell you, the hell you doing playing in free league? It's, it's the, the listener, listener league. league, big co. You don't play in it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only free league we're in. <laughs> Got it. And we did get Tony in the UDPL, right? Yeah, we did. Second free league. Well, it's 50 bucks, but it's basically free. <laughs> yeah, look, like, look, if I miss out on those guys that we were tearing up, the Moors and the, the Terraces and those kind of guys, I'm, I'm, I might try to move back a pick by pick by pick here and just gain some stuff because most people hate Tony. They're listening to other people. They're not doing their homework. I did my homework. I like the guy. I'm going to take him. I, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm, I've already ended up with him in one of the rookie drafts that I've done. We could have ended up with him twice. And I just realized that, Hey, I, I, we're going to end up with a lot of this guy. So let's take St. Brown. I'm not mad at St. Brown. You could take St. Brown. I'm not upset about it. Um, but I, I, I got a little layer here. I know that the third round is going to get really fast and we need to keep moving, but here, I, I love your comparison to the IUK and the way the NFL treated, treats this player versus the, the I got a ton of IUK last year for that same reason. And but the, uh, like you said, the Giants are completely full at the positions, and I don't know could if look they had, a lot different in a year though. Could look a lot different in a year. Let me finish. <laughs> so they're 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 they got a ton of players. They got a quarterback who kind of might struggle to get the ball around to the players that he needs to when he needs to, and they got um, a system and a and a offensive coordinator who definitely struggles. So. I don't see any way Kadarius Tony jumps off the page as early and often as Ayuk does. But that being said, I think it's going to create a buying opportunity as the season progresses because as soon as Kyle Shanahan was able to take backup quarterbacks and get the ball to Ayuk, mm -hmm. I don't think the Giants are going to be able to take Daniel Jones snap in and snap out and yeah. spread it around and get. I mean, they just got Galladay, they got Saquon, they got Evan Ingram, they got all they got 
players everywhere. Yeah. And I just don't think that there's going to be enough football and enough football thrown accurately and enough offensive line protecting a quarterback. At, you know, I don't think every, oh, everything can come together to make Tony turn into Ayuk this year. But I love everything what you just said, Casey, because it's completely possible that it works out the same way. I think it's going to take just a little bit longer. Oh, for sure. And that, I think that's baked into some of this. I think that's baked into everybody's opinion. Nobody can see past, you know, that, you know, I was kind of, I wasn't necessarily hating on Sermon, you know, look, uh, the two running backs that they have, the undrafted free at Mostert and, and what's his name? Who's the other guy there? Wilson. Wilson. They're probably out of there. Gall- Gallman's got a one year deal. Like it could be Sermon's show next year and, and nobody cares, but it's not about that. It's about that you can't, to show me a a spot where they just used one guy. Whereas, you know, the Tony thing, all those guys could be gone again. And the whole, the quarterback could be different. Everything could be different. And I I just like the player a lot. And like you said, I think you are probably going to have to wait for him to really be good there because there wasn't Debo was even out for, and Kittle was even out for Ayuk and, you know, it's just a much Mm -hmm. better situation over there. So yeah, you're definitely right about that part, but yeah, I'm i I'm a, give me, give me Kadarius. You guys want to keep it moving? Any thoughts on Friar you take you guys taking him behind St. Brown and Tony. You got his where where you Yeah, I gotta I gotta slide him in a little bit after that. I could I could probably take a couple more wide receivers if I had to and the running backs. But if you need a tight end and you want to take Fryermuth, it's tight end premium, swing away. Yeah, it's like same thing. I mean, it's it is roster construction. The tight ends take so long, it's still hard. Even in tight end premium, it's hard to take the actual rookies. Um Unless it's Kyle Pitts, obviously, but the prime Ruth is just um, probably going to be continued to be underrated and overshadowed because of Pitts' his greatness. But he um, he's got all the tools to make a good quarter, a good tight end. But his quarterback's arms falling off, and the quarter and Steelers are going to be doing something different at the quarterback position next year or sooner. You could and there's still think. Ebron there too, so it's gonna it's gonna be a minute. I mean, you're not expecting 100%, this man to come 100%. out here and crush it for you as a freshman or a rookie, but that's not usually exactly. what this game is about. So you got, yeah, yeah. Friar has got to be is on deep benches. Take him as long early as you want to, because you can stash him. But if a short bench, you got it, you might need to take somebody that's going to hit something a little sooner, because if not, Friar might be on the waiver wire. FFPC could definitely be on that waiver wire very quickly. For sure. Um, all right. So then it goes Zach Wilson at two, eight. I mean, another quarterback is kind of like this is usually where the quarterbacks start going. If they're around those at those other three kind of ended up going a little earlier than they normally would. I feel like in most of at least our home drafts, this is usually where the quarterbacks start going, you know, two, five, two, six, two, seven, two, eight, somewhere in that range, uh, especially, you know, a guy who was a second overall pick. So I probably wouldn't take him there, but whatever. Uh, not upset about it. What do you guys think? <laughs> whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree. So two nines, Amari Rogers, uh, if, if a Aaron is around, uh, I could you could take Amari Rogers over Zach Wilson, no problem. Which there's a little bit of who knows what's going to happen. The Packers are a pretty well run organization. Um, just as far as you know, being ready. There's a point in the '80s where they were kind of bad, but hadn't been a whole lot of time in my life that I can remember that the Packers struggled. Um, they usually figure things out, so I'm not that concerned about taking Amari Rogers. But the the real shininess of Amari Rogers could be worn off by next year if, if Jordan Love can't play. Yeah, and I don't think that there's anything built into this either. This is this ADP here, this 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 area of where you're taking Amari Rodgers, you're banking on Aaron Rodgers being the quarterback. That's what drove this pick up so high. It's a bummer because you could get Amari Rodgers, you know, like pre-NFL draft in the third or fourth round, right? Yeah. Our, our, our later round stabs are now high – uh, but you could thing. also you could also say that if Aaron Rodgers was 32, that Amari Rodgers would be at the end of the first round. Maybe. I mean, he still is a, is a limited athletic athletic wise, you know, slot wide receiver. So even though he, he does stretch the seam and he makes he has a, a slew of long plays, multiple 80 yard touchdown catches like he can he can definitely take it off the top down the seam and and. Get you know he crushes in yak. I think he was fourth in the nation in yak this past year with eight yards per reception or eight yards after the catch per reception, average seven point nine for his career. So I mean he he I've I've said it before he's the best slot wide receiver that Clemson's put out. Now I know you're not rushing to get Adam Humphreys or Hunter Renfro in your fantasy lineup per se. They are generally speaking better on the field players than they are for your fantasy team. But this dude is 
is also kind of a game breaker down the seam and, and can sure. do a lot after the catch. So I'm I'm all for taking Amari Rodgers. I think it's a great pick. And if Aaron Rodgers does come, then this was a value. And if he doesn't come back, then you're kind of bummed. But you're not – it's not like he's left for dead because, like you said – They'll well, it's just it, I just I just feel like all the rest of these guys here all have issues of guys question in front marks. of them and question marks and yada, yada, yada. So I, I'm fine with putting Amari Rogers near the top of those question marks. Sure. Um, so so he goes next. Then Kenneth Gainwell. Um, I would probably put Gainwell up above Zach Wilson and Fryer Booth. Um, but that's fine. I mean, he's I see that as Naheen Hines plus. Uh, that's kind of the way I view Kenneth Gainwell. Um, I like so that. It could be a, a great. Uh, contributor to your fantasy roster. I don't know if you're going to gain a ton of value for trade wise here for taking game well, but you could get a nice startable piece um, at times. And he could really, I, I really like parts of his game. He's a great receiver, uh, fun player. And then uh, Diami Brown goes next here. Uh, if he wouldn't have landed where he landed, I think he would probably be a little have a con- in my opinion, could be a little higher. He's fun to watch. He's, you know, one six, one, one ninety ish. A um, lot of lot of electric plays, but he he had the benefit of a of a strong quarterback and Sam Howell over there and a strong system where they scored a ton of points. Um, so he's fun to watch. Uh, but lands in Washington, who you know after Ryan Fitzpatrick, who knows what's going to happen there quarterback wise. And you already have Curtis Samuel and uh, Terry McLaurin, who I think is fucking awesome. And Logan Thomas emerged last year, so I think it might be tough for him to really be in there. But again, this is might be baked in at this point. Uh, 211 kind of fine with that. I'd probably take Nico Collins over Diami Brown. Anybody have any thoughts on that? I think I'd have to take Nico Collins as well. Uh, just recently have looked into most of these guys. Uh, Nico, Nico could be a beast. I mean, it sucks the situation that he's in with the Texans, but he's, he's a, he's a monster with the ball in the air and he's a big dude and he's fast. He's got a little Denzel Mims in him, in my opinion. And he was never given a fair shake because they couldn't have anybody to throw him the ball there. And, uh, so Nico, I think, I think Nico's the next guy on this list. I'd have to be taken. I could even take him over Amari Rogers just because, the physical specimen that he is and, yeah. and, and the, the catch, not a lot of those catch prowess draft. that he has. Right. Right. And the speed to go along with it. He's an elite type athlete to go with the size and, and, and ball catching skills. Yeah. So I was up here at uh two twelve. I took Chuba. That's my guy. I really like Chuba. I struggle. I took the whole clock on that one. I struggle. It was Nico Collins or him. If I, was on the clock in real life. I'd probably take Nico Collins at this point, but Chuba, I got a hard time quitting him. He's on a great offense behind backing up the best running back in the game. Um, you know, we'll see how that plays out. So that's why you mock it up before you fuck it up. Um, and then we're moving into round three. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson. Let me, can here. I jump in there for go a second? Ahead, go ahead. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, just like Jay said, like, Coming in, I don't know much about Nico Collins other than he's a huge ass man and he's fast. And I'm gonna default to that a lot of times, especially if I got the roster to let him sit around and try to see what happens. Um, turn around if we can find find a Chase Claypool somewhere around here. Mm-hmm. Um, and and Chuba Chuba's a stud. Like Chuba just happened to fall in line behind the best running back in the NFL. So Chuba is an av- his stud, and now he's stuck. But anything can happen. Anything we, I mean, it happen. just it just happened last year. So, like, I'm going to take, you know, I'll take a Chuba. I'll take Chuba before I take Fryermuth. Six for six picks before this. If I got if I got a deeper bench where he can sit, like I was, you know, if mm-hmm. I'll take Chuba and just stash him. And if something yep. happens to because, like you said, I love the offensive system. Who knows how long before Joe Brady gets taken away from that team? Sure, but. Even still, the rule has got them boys moving in the right direction, and yeah. they are, and and then just it seems like it's just a good culture they got going now, and and the players love him, and he seems like a cool ass dude, and he's you know still like you said very connected to college. Yeah, I love that um, they took him because we loved him, and that that to me gave me some and satisfaction I'm, that exactly, and, they, and the Panthers got Terrace Marshall too. Like I, I just enjoy what they got going on over there. They got the they got. A lot of people say they paid way too much for Sam Darnold. I think they got Sam Darnold for super cheap. Oh, me too. I mean, so it's people, you just uh, you get a good quarterback for a second rounder, and fuck, man. I That's, mean, was, and you, was, it wasn't even this year's second rounder. Wow. So I uh, just uh, give me, give me, um, well, that that ended Chuba. up 
in the middle yeah. of the second round if I need to. I'll take Chuba over all those guys we just talked about from two eight on just because of what he could happen if if yeah, that's fair. Christian McCaffrey goes fair-ish. down and what other fair ish because who knows none of those guys might do anything anyway. Yeah. So might as well give me a stud running back and who's sitting behind a stud running back. Right. Well and, that's when I was when I was on the clock. It was like this is the part where I can afford to take a shot on just the talent of loving the guy. And you know, I like Nico Collins fine, but Chuba's my guy and I and I mm-hmm. want to take him. So I just want to be on record saying I just want to be on record say I'll take Chuba in the middle of the second. <laughs> Word. And, I, and I'll be in all those drafts. We just took him a couple of times, letting him f- people or just say, oh, well, he's behind Christian McCaffrey. We got him at way in. We got him we have third. Christian McCaffrey in one of those leagues. So oh, we took him, we took him like earlier in that league, but we took him at, late, at the end of the second round, third round in one league. Just stack them yep. up. Stack them up. All right. So moving to the third round, uh, Rondell Moore, Stevenson. <laughs> Ramondre. <laughs> Ramondre Stevenson goes here. Fine, fine with taking him at that point. Um, not taking him in the second any at any point. I would take Nico Collins over him. Like you said, Jay Wayne, Nico Collins goes next. Nico Collins is, you know, never really had a fair shake. There's a lot to like about him. Goes to a shitty situation. I think he I don't think he's going to ever be a one, but I think he could be a, a, a good two somewhere. He could um, be a one, though, man. He has the makeup. I don't think, I don't think he's that good. Um I think he's good enough, and right now I'll take a shot at him. Uh, so then I believe this is you. I think you're up here, Jay Wayne. Who'd you take? Yeah, Three. I took I took Dwayne Estridge. Go. Eskridge. Excuse me. Uh, I I don't know. I don't know if that was the right pick or not. I Looking back, I it's the right feel, pick. feel like I should have taken Tylen Wallace maybe, or or uh, I, I could I could give – if if you're gonna give me the option between taking a guy Russell Wilson or Lamar Jackson, I'm gonna take Russell Wilson's third guy and Tyler Lockett. I mean, he could be out of there at any point. I mean, he's a little older, well, and I mean, I think Tyler Lockett's great and all, but like we've just seen, like some guys I like don't think Tyler, Tyler Lockett Lockett's... play forever, and but some guys, or they fall off a cliff and, and like Doug Baldwin. I know he had a lot of injuries, but Tyler Lockett's not been the cleanest guy in, in the history of injuries. And all of a sudden you think you're playing until 34, 35. And then all of a sudden you're washed after another season and a half. So, well, you know, they really... paid him like he's not going to be washed and then he has a dead cap hit. That's going to keep him on the team for probably three more. We years. can, we can say whatever you want about any of that stuff, but like the, it's nobody like cares. The de- nobody cares about, yeah, no, you couldn't trade Carson Wentz either, but he's gone. Like it's I, shit happens. It's the, the, the money's made up. I don't know. I <laughs> anybody mean, know anybody who knows how to move it around they're all the good teams and the salary cap is just is, it doesn't even the, matter the money's made it up. is i just don't know if tyler i mean he is 28 going on 29 so there's a potential that his game falls off a cliff his hairline's I, like 40 <laughs> yeah so so what some people don't have good <laughs> hair what are you gonna do I like the Eskridge pick. I think that's where he rounds out for me. Uh, yeah. I, I could, I guess I could get down with Elijah Mitchell there uh, just because give me a cheap part of the Niners background, but I like Eskridge only one year really or so playing receiver kind of switcher from corner and was just absolutely slaying shit. Yeah. I Western mean, Michigan. The Was it the Broncos? Yeah, they're the Broncos. They're the Broncos too. Terrible, t- terrible uniform colors, but whatever. I mean, he's, he's a lot of fun to watch, you know, mm-hmm. game breaking speed. So, but it just they don't you know they don't want to throw it that much and he's Ooh. a third guy there the Seahawks so the first yeah, the, the, that that ship has sailed with they were they threw the shit out of the football for a long stretches of the beginning first half of the season and they got back to what they did yeah, well guess who's, and guess who's not there fun. anymore guess who's not there anymore mm-hmm. that OC all See right ya. I like how you're defending my pick to me yeah. <laughs> Kylan Hill goes next. If Kylan Hill would have landed somewhere else, I would be way higher on him. Kind of yeah. sucks, but I'm he's after all the guys that I like are gone. I'm taking Kylan Hill. He's usually more of an end of the third, fourth round guy for me, but he goes at uh, four four. Big Co. Is this you next? Did you take Mac Jones? He did. Oh, I got auto picked. Got auto picked. Yeah, guess mm-hmm. what? Big Co. Is getting auto picked at least one time a draft. Got to so have one. It. How you feel <laughs> yeah. about your Mac Jones pick? <laughs> Uh, well, the auto trick, I mean, in third round, your first round pick that goes to the Patriots. I mean, you can't be upset with that. He could definitely be in your starting lineup before you know it. If, if the things either work out for him or don't work out for the guy that you have in your starting lineup, get, you know, quarterbacks get hurt too sometimes. Um, uh, yeah, you know, I would have rather had the free, uh, 
I when I say free three five isn't paying a whole lot. I'd rather have a, a Elijah Mitchell for the running back for the you know Forty Niners. Put him on my team. Um, I, I mean, once it gets past these guys, yeah, it's just Tylon, 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 Tylon. To me, yeah, to me, I'm uh, I'm super happy if somebody wants to give me a third round pick next year to move into the fourth or something like that. And then to, if when I get in the fourth, you're going to give me a fourth round pick next year to get, take that pick. And I'll just have all that equity moving forward. Sure. For sure. All right. So the next picks, Elijah Mitchell. I like that pick. Could have taken him anywhere. Hunter long goes next tight end premium. He did land with Kaseki. I don't know what the plight of Kaseki long-term is. One more year, baby. I've, Hunter long was my tight end too. I love the pick there. Hunter long. Um, I think he's, I think he's really good. I'm interested. He really, when we were digging into all the stats and metrics from PFF with Kyle Pitts, Hunter Long just kept piling up either above him or right behind him. I think Hunter Long's a really good player. I think that I like what the Dolphins are doing. Um, the next pick at at uh, three eight is two two Atwell. I mean, at this point, why not? Whatever, uh, you know. Sure. Whatever. Um, yeah. Nah. He's ahead. what? He's one fifty, but you were talking about how he 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 really avoids contact. Well, he does a good job of not taking the big shot really ever. He kind of knows what he's built like and doesn't do it. Doesn't put himself in those positions. But you know, whatever. It's the Rams. You're gonna give me that that guy who's just incredible. Could be your next deep shot kind of guy and and do I a watched, couple different things in that offense. He's fun, but yeah, I watch a couple games and you see him running in motion and you're like, oh, this is why the Rams like him because they can. They can just run them all over the place. Yeah. So the next pick, three nine, uh, JV and Hawkins, not picking him there. Uh, Josh Palmer goes in the next pick. You could have taken Josh Palmer at the end of the second round if you wanted to. Um, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that. Uh, if you wanted to even take him up in the middle of the second round, really, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't do that necessarily. But lands in a good spot. That you know, Mike Williams isn't maybe maybe he's not going to be around too long. You're tied to Herbert. Uh, he's kind of a jump ball player like a Mike Williams uh, had some good tape against some of the best corners in the sec, uh, but not super athletic. I uh, didn't, didn't know a ton about him. Had to go back and figure a little bit more about Josh Palmer out. I think he's probably was the best value here in the third round so far. Um, any thoughts on Josh Palmer boys? He's, he's a fun enough player to watch a lot of these. I feel like this is a big tier of guys here and, and I'm not sure who I want in front of who, but I can't, I don't think middle of the second is a little bit much, but if you, like I said, I, I could, if you wanted to put him up against Eskridge and, and say, maybe you should take Palmer. I can't be mad at that. And, sure. and you know, there's a lot of really nice looking catches. There's just nothing that jumps off the page, but he's got some good body control and ball tracking mm -hmm. skills and just, same thing kind of with him and Nico Collins didn't really have a quarterback to throw him the ball. So it's really tough to judge these guys. And, and if you're an analytics guy and you just want to be like, Oh, he didn't have the break a dominator that I want, you know, that there's some context to, to situations like this, you know, Amari Rogers yeah. didn't have a good, couldn't tell you what the breakout or the dominator is on Josh Palmer, but Josh Palmer, was, he does have Herbert. He was, yeah, he had a dominator. That's, that's, there's your dominator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's got, got Herbert thrown in the ball. His dominator was in the 40th percentile, and he broke out at age 21, which is the 37th percentile, mm -hmm. and and only 14.4 yards per reception, which is only the 44th percentile. So I would it's safe to say the analytical community probably does not like this guy, but he does look probably like not. more of a football player than an athlete, which a lot of the times combined with a good work ethic in the right type of situation, like a decent offense Certainly. with a good quarterback, can yield. Positive decent, results, decent baby. Results. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. I can't be mad at it. I can't. All right. We're around this thing out. Brevin Jordan here is a tight end from the U. Uh, he was, I believe it when he came in, he was like the number one tight end in his recruiting class at this point in tight end premium, the Hunter longs, the Brevin, all those guys. I'm fine with just shooting your shots through the third and the fourth round with tight ends and tight end premium here. Um, I would definitely take Hunter long over him. Then I took Tylen Wallace there. I, that's I'm, I'm in love with that pick. Pretty much anywhere in the third, fine with Tylen Wallace. He would have been up in that mid-second uh, area for me if he would have landed somewhere better. Um, just seems a little buried in there for now, but I like the player. Um, he could end up being Rashad Bateman. He could be be the guy that they like over there. You know, who the hell knows? It happens uh, from time to time. So then we're into the fourth round. We got Jonathan Adams, and I'm not going to front. I don't know a single thing about that guy. Um, Larry Roundtree goes 4-2. Eh. Jacob Harris, Jay Wayne, 
you want to talk anything about him or sure i mean okay. what are we doing here in the fourth round we're throwing darts man i don't know what the fuck to do in this fourth round take a paris I, baby thought i could get amari rogers but let me go ahead and gamble on this this another freak athlete with ridiculous size 6'5 219 you know just all the burst and broad in the 94th percentile for sub four four three um 40 yard dash six five four on the three cone drill are you kidding me and then yeah, dude Pile on the fact that it looks like he was recruited and was playing wide receiver, but they might slide him into the tight end spot on the sleeper. He's look, a tight end. Looks like uh, the Rams are slotting him at a tight end. So if the Rams, you're going to give me a really uber athletic tight end. He's a soccer player um, and then went to a different the school. Then, then he walked it, walked on at uh, at, U at UCF, I believe. Um, and has made, I, he's my favorite fourth round uh, stab right now. Uh, going especially like later fourth rounds, right? I probably uh, reached a little bit, but I just ah, wanted to get his whatever. name here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Khalil Herbert goes next to the Bears. Probably not messing with him. Uh, Jay Wayne and Big Co's boy uh, Powell goes at four or five here. I know that would be a Big Co shot for sure. There it is. That was your guy. That was your pick. You knew I was taking Powell. I mean, oh, I, for sure. He played a little bit of he at times. He looked a little bully ballish. He looked like he pushed a defender down over there for Clemson. And then he goes to a, a relatively thin uh, depth chart for wide receivers at this point for the Chiefs on Patrick Mahomes' team. Uh, check. Put him on my team. Fourth rounder. Give me a uh, sure swing. Sage Surratt. That's going to be a pass for me. Uh, Anthony Schwartz burner out of uh Auburn there. Fine with that shot in the fourth round by J. Mike Des Fitzpatrick. Uh, the Titans traded up and they really didn't take very many uh, wide receivers. So I'm, I love that as a fourth round shot there. Uh, Jalen Camp. Don't know a ton about him. Uh, Trey McKitty. Uh, tight end for the, the uh, Chargers there. I, I, not my favorite shot. I would rather go Harris or Tremble, but whatever. Uh, Jamar Jefferson here at Detroit. Was it was a darling and has faded into the mystic here or into the mist. Um, and then I took Tommy Tremble, which I think, you know, the, not a whole lot of targets for Tommy Tremble, but he goes to the Carolina Panthers. I like that. And pretty athletic guy. And then just during the big draft coverage that nobody likes, they were they were saying this guy could be in the Kittle Kelsey range uh, if, if developed correctly. So give me Tommy Tremble. <laughs> I like it. All right, boys. Good stuff. Uh, we'll see you next time. We're going to be doing a super flex mock next, and uh, we'll be doing more of these. They'll, they'll, we'll have some other questions. We'll move a little faster through them. I think, you know, mocks are the, probably the best thing that you can do right now. Uh, just showing kind of where guys go and where they land in different spots to get you ready and talk about like, Oh, do I like that? Do I not like that? It's going to change as time goes on. As you gather more information, let's not pretend that everybody knows everything about every single one of these players and the situations that they're going into. Um, and then, you know, obviously information will come out about them and how they're doing in these camps and they'll get, you know, that that's when there'll be other value attached to this because, you know, the masses are going, Oh, this camp news and this and that, and they're moving them up. And it's like, Oh, well now there's more now there's value on this guy. And now there's value on that guy where it wasn't there before. Uh, so, right. Which is why it's so dumb. If you have your rookie drafts going on right now, I don't know why if a PC does it so soon and then everybody else just wants to, they can't wait. They can't wait. I love the later rookie drafts, baby. Let this shit breathe. Let's not yeah. act like we know everything that's going on and let's there's, let's figure it out together. There's another tight end that the Redskins picked up. Reyes. 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 Go ahead and Reyes. go ahead and pick that guy up too. He's yeah. just tested <laughs> athletically off the charts in the pits range. He's huge, six five Chilean basketball player. Uh read up on him a little bit, and I can pretend like I knew a single fucking thing about that guy. But he looks awesome without a shirt on and blew up the athletic testing and he's got some basketball moves. So we'll see what happens. All right. Well, hey, come join us on Patreon. Get get access to that Discord channel. We're constantly in there. People have been hitting us up nonstop questions with their rookie drafts, trying to help them boys out. They participate in these mocks, right? You got to mock it up before you fuck it up. The only way you're going to learn and figure out what's going on is to practice, baby, and that's what we're doing. Come yeah. join us. Appreciate y'all listening and watching here on the podcast. Hit Go us ahead. with a five-star, baby. Let me get that review on the because iTunes. 
Bitco's got some trade shows on there. There's going to be some more trade shows. We're going to get an FFPC role in that we talk about, like a startup, and kind of keep it transparent through there. So there's a lot of fun stuff going up on the on the Discord and the Patreon. And Bitco's got hours of uh, rookie drafts uh, trading to uh, <laughs> to spew into uh, existence on for the patrons. So yeah, a lot of new uh, fresh rookie drafts to talk about. Yeah. So hopefully we'll catch you over there. Don't get down on ET, kids. Till next time. Don't do it. Peace.